welcome back to Danganronpa. I'm Liara, and today we are going to try and finish up the game. It depends on how long it'll take. Uh, we may have to break it into an extra episode, but we are in chapter six. It is the final chapter. We, in the last episode, we survived a class trial. We protected Kyoko. Uh, she was supposed to be framed for killing the mysterious 16th student. She didn't do it either, but uh, Monokuma in ended up framing us, and we were thrown down a garbage chute thanks to our friend the AI who made a last minute uh, comeback. And Kyoko came and rescued us, and now we need to go tell the others about the mastermind and what's going on. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Let's talk anyway. to Kyoko. Anyway, right now, we have to go find the others. They're probably in the dorm somewhere. Shall we go? Alright, so we are going to go find the remaining people, and, um... We are going to tell them about the mastermind and what's going on. Let's see if we can use the map shortcut. They should be over here, right? Alright, well, if they're in the dorms, then let's go here. Alright. Let's see if we can find anyone. It doesn't say where anybody is. Let's try Biakia. Alright, this is Biakia's room. Is he inside? No answer. Hey. I don't think he's here. Come on, we need to keep looking. Alright. Um, what about Toko? Alright, this is Toko's room. Is she inside? doesn't seem like it. Nobody's around. Hey. Alright. Well, just for completeness sake, let's go ahead and make sure we check everybody's room. But probably nobody's going to be in their room. Alright. It doesn't hey. seem that anybody is in their dorms. So, we will have to look around. Because this is the last room... Yeah, nobody is hey. around in the dorms. Will it show us on the map, I wonder, where everyone is? Oh wait, somebody's there. Alright, I see somebody on the map over here. Alright, let's see, who do we got? I saw somebody. Where did I see them? Let me look again. Um... Near the bathhouse. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, I wonder if it's going to show anybody anywhere. Um, let's see. It's only going to the first floor. Okay. Can I go to the second? Wait, the second floor is locked off? What? Hmm. Oh, wait. Was that... The second floor was open. Okay, I'm very confused. Alright, what about the bathhouse? Maybe they're in the bathhouse because there's no surveillance cameras there. Have they decided to come in here? No? seem like it. But let's just look around, because who knows? Maybe they're hiding somewhere. Alright. We just gotta look around everywhere, I think. See if we see anybody. Alright. Nobody in here. So, let's leave the sauna, and then we will leave the uh, bathhouse. And then we will go back to the hall. Um, because we can't get off this floor, so they have to be around here somewhere. Maybe, maybe 
Maybe people are in the dining room. That's another good ga gathering place. I mean, it's nighttime. Where would they be at nighttime? Anybody here? And suddenly, we were greeted with... <laughs> okay! You again! <laughs> I think he's having a, uh, a malfunction. Is he broken? <sighs> I suppose his emotional instability has reached its limit. <laughs> he's not even speaking words. What the heck? However... I wonder what that was all about. I couldn't help but let out a sigh of relief. Ah. Oh, is that here. Makoto? Y you guys! It is! There's no two ways about it. That's Makoto! Yay! Huh? You s survived? <laughs> Jeez. You're like a stubborn little cockroach, you know that? You sound too happy, like you wanted to I'm just die. asking to make sure, but... You're not a ghost, right? No, we're not a ghost. Everyone was there. All my friends who had struggled together and survived. As soon as I saw their faces, I couldn't help myself. I started to tear up. What? Wait, what's that smell? What the heck? Yeah, man, that seriously stinks. Ah! It's Makoto. He smells like a wet dog. Well, we were in the garbage chute. <laughs> Get away, shoo, shoo. And in a flash, my tears dried up. <laughs> All right. Makoto. There's no time to indulge in an extended happy reunion. We need to explain to everyone what happened with Monokuma. Yes. Explain? Explain what? Hmm. But is it okay that you're here? What if the mastermind catches you? It's true. That's related to what I have to tell you all. I need to tell you all about the last class trial. Huh? The last class trial? In other words... We're going to redo Makuro's trial. Huh? What? Seriously? How about that? What's the point of redoing it? Makoto killed her, right? No, I didn't do it. Like I keep telling you. Wrong. Makoto isn't the killer. And of course it's not me or any of you. Huh? <laughs> then who is it? I see. What she's saying is it was all the work of the mastermind. Huh? What? You're saying the mastermind killed Makoro? That's right. Yep, it was all an elaborate trap contrived by the mastermind. Makoto spotted the trap in time and did what he had to stop it. However... But his decision meant that he would be the one to die. What? What did you say? You spotted the trap, did you, Makoto? You make it sound like it was easy. I just... You know. However. But executing Makoto, who wasn't the blackened, is a clear violation of the school regulations. The rules state that only the blackened is to be executed. The mastermind broke their own rules. <clears throat> which is why I went and negotiated with them to have the trial one more time. Huh? And the mastermind agreed? Does that mean they really did break the rules? <clears throat> they had no choice but to agree. You used the TV broadcast to gain the leverage you needed, didn't you? Correct. Very observant of you. Naturally. I recall what you said at the end of the last class trial. When you said, now it's the mastermind that's ensnared. That's what you were referring to. Don't be mean! Hey, I'm totally in the dark here. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't understand, you can ask Kyoko to explain it again. Later. <laughs> so, knowing all of this, what do we do now? About that. It's about who killed Makuro, right? So our job is to expose the mastermind? Hmm. But there's more to it than that, correct? Um, yeah. For us to win this time, we have to solve every last mystery surrounding the school. Huh? Every last mystery? But... But we've been looking around all this time, and we still don't know anything, right? Anyway... You probably guessed already, but if we lose this time, everyone dies. Oh, e no! Everyone! I hate you! Hey, who said you could agree to those terms without talking to the rest of us? <laughs> I'm fine with this the way they things the way they are I'm fine living here forever with the master I meanwhile want to get out of here as soon as humanly possible anyway 
At this point, the only way for us to survive is to unravel the truth. <laughs> In other words, one decisive final battle. A rather interesting development, I'd say. But... But, uh, figuring out who the mastermind is, and how they killed Makuro, and all the school's mysteries? <sighs> it's a pretty tall friggin' order. Maybe, but this time, the trial is different. We know who our enemy is now. So if we work together and search as hard as we can, I'm sure we'll solve all those mysteries. I'm not so sure about that. Huh? I... I can't agree with the idea of working together with everyone. You can't agree? Why not? I mean, working together with everyone seems like the most obvious way to solve all the mysteries. Indeed. That's what I thought, too. At first. Until Monokuma gave us that little hint of his. Hint? <laughs> it's a very polarizing approach, I know. But, okay, enough puns. Anyway, here's a hint. I'm sure I told you this already, but... This killing game began with 16 participants, all of them high school students. And the only people to take a single step in Hope's Peak since killing, the killing game began are those 16 students. I see. Monokuma said that, did he? Then Kyoko's opinion is perfectly reasonable. Huh? But why? So in other words... If the mastermind really is the one who killed Makuro, as Kyoko says... Then the mastermind would have had to set foot in this school, right? Monokuma could probably murder Makuro, but there's no way he could have disguised the scene like that. In other words... But according to Monokuma, the only people who have set foot in Hope's Peak are the 16 students who have been taking part in the killing game. <laughs> then the m mastermind is... One of the main ones of us. There were 15 of us in the main hall at the very beginning. Add in Mamakuro and you get 16. <laughs> so the mastermind w would have to be one of them? That's right. And of those 16 people we started out with, the only ones still alive are the people standing right here. Need I continue? Or do you get it now? What? You're saying the mastermind is one of us? No way! You, you can't be serious. Well, wait, we can't say for sure that's true yet. Monokuma might have just said all that to confuse us. Indeed. It's certainly a possibility, but only one among many. The mastermind being one of us is also a possibility. <laughs> and that is one possibility we can't ignore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're an ult the ultimate, right? The ultimate despair? So they m must be a high schooler. <laughs> you can't say it's not possible. But if one of us was a mastermind, they'd have to be controlling Monokuma somehow, right? But did you ever see anyone acting suspicious any time Monokuma was active? <laughs> well... Maybe they snuck off and controlled him in, in secret. But... I don't care how sneaky you are, we would have noticed someone sneaking off that many times. I'm right, right? Then maybe Monokuma was on autopilot. Maybe they loaded up all the dialogue and actions beforehand. In that case, there's no way he could have had all those back and forth conversations with us. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be entirely impossible if they directed the flow of the conversation. Well, well maybe, but still. Uh-oh, what do we got? Class announcement. Ah, uh, this is a school announcement. You've all probably figured this out by now, but at this point, the killing game has now entered true ending mode. So, oh in the name of fairness, I will unlock every room in the school. Oh, boy. Look wherever you want. Solve the mystery in whatever way you see fit. <laughs> then we can all meet up at the class trial, okay? Boy. <laughs> this guy's crazy. Hmm? 
How very magnanimous of him to unlock all the rooms. That's fine. The time for talk is done. Now we need to begin our investigation. But, but... Hmm. I was planning on working alone from the beginning anyway. In the name of my family. At this point, I can rely only on myself, on the Togami blood flowing through my veins. Hmm. I have no time to worry about the rest of you. Each of you must uphold your responsibility. Goodbye. Well then. After making his final statement, Biakia left the dining hall. <coughs> yeah, I'm a master. He didn't take me with him. Hey. Do you blame him? <laughs> without master, the rest of you are like coffee with cream. Without the cream, or coffee. <laughs> You're totally useless. <sighs> so bye. With that, Toko trudged out of the dining hall. <sighs> And now she's gone. And you're gonna go off by yourself, right, Kyoko? Indeed. That's right. Hmm. Which just leaves Makoto, Hina, and me. You know? In that case, I'm gonna go by myself, too. Just a second! Wait, how come? How about that? Just wait and see. I'm gonna use my totally awesome spirit power to figure out the mastermind's identity. <laughs> ha ha ha. <laughs> Laughing loudly, Hiro left the dining hall. Aww. Everyone's really gonna go off by themselves? What about you, Hina? Hmm. Um, I guess I'll do the same thing. But... I mean, it's not that I don't trust everyone, you know? Cause, I mean... But up till now, I haven't really been all that useful. I just depended on Sakura and everyone else. You're not useless. If you hadn't been here, I would have died. Huh? M Makoto? <laughs> That's really nice of you to say. But... But still, I know I've mostly been totally useless. Okay. So I figure at least here at the end, maybe I can find something that'll help us all get out of here. So I'm gonna go off and do it all on my own. <laughs> okay, see you later. Hina was in surprisingly high spirits as she dashed out of the dining hall. And once again, it's just us two. Indeed. All right, so are we going to explore together, Kyoko? So you're going to go off on your own too, right, Kyoko? However... Well, don't misunderstand. Just because we're going to do our searches separately doesn't mean we can't still work together. So... That goes for all of us. I think I see what you mean. Doing our own investigating doesn't mean we can't work together in the end. I should just see it as a splitting up to cover more ground. And then we can get back together and share what we found. Yeah, that's right. So then. Well, I'd better get going. I have an endless list of things I need to check. Correct. Monokuma said all the doors in the school had been unlocked, right? So we should be able to investigate every nook and cranny in the school. We can visit all the places we couldn't go before. Makoto. Makoto, no matter what it takes, we have to uncover the truth. By any means necessary. With that, Kyoko was gone, leaving only me. I don't have time to waste either. I have to begin my search. I still can't believe the mastermind might be one of us. So that's what I have to prove. I'll prove that the mastermind isn't one of us. I'll expose the mastermind's true identity and solve the mystery of this school. And then we can all escape together. All right. I guess I'll start by taking another look at Makuro's Monokuma file. Due to the explosion, the victim's identity is unknown. They were, however, dead before the blast. The victim had been stabbed a single time with a knife, which went completely through the body. They had also been struck in the head with an object about as thick as a metal pipe. The body was covered with other wounds, but these were at least several days old. Once we find out who killed Mokuro Ukasaba, then we'll know who the mastermind is. So where should I start my investigation to figure out who killed her? I guess I should start with the rooms that were locked up, up until now. The headmaster's room, the bio lab, the door in the data center with Monokuma's face on it. Oh, and the second floor of the dorms where the gate was down before. That should be open now, right? After that, I'll have to double check the areas that are connected to the murder which means the garden and the dojo. Okay, time to get started. Places to check has been added to the truth bullet section. All right, 
So, let's immediately jump over and see if we can get to, we want to go up to, is it the second floor? Or I mean the third floor? Mm. Nothing on the third floor, but the fourth floor. Okay, so there's data center. Let's go check the data center. Alright, that is going to be right here, right? Let's see what's in here. Alright. Hey, Makoto! Ah, Makoto, are you here to look around too? Is that what you're doing here? Hmm. Yeah, I can't help but wonder about that Monokuma door. Yeah! So I figured, if all the doors in the school had been unlocked, that one should be open too, but... right? Although I couldn't bring myself to open it. Because, I mean... It might explode, right? And that really sucks. So, you open it. I'm sure she didn't mean it. But she made it sound like she was only she was okay with me getting blown up. Alright. Is there anything else to look at here? Let's just examine. Uh, so it's not like the other monitors. It's a normal TV set up to receive the live broadcast. Apparently, the ceiling game is being broadcast live across the world. Thinking about it, it's making my mind start to crack again. So I or creak again. So I better stop. Um, there's a bunch of computers all lined up. They look like high-performance PCs. Nothing like the ancient laptop Alter Ego was installed on. This must be what the mastermind uses to connect to the network. Even though I'm living it, I might have watched the broadcast of the killing game myself. Alright, um... That monitor... There's really a ridiculous number of monitors here. The mastermind has been watching us on these. Alright. Time for the door. Okay, so... I'll open it. Oh. oh, wait. Let me take cover first. I don't want to get exploded. Hina raced over to a nearby desk and hid underneath it. Okay, go ahead. Everything will be okay, right? All right, here goes nothing. I threw all my weight into it, but the door opened much easier than I expected. What? In the world, there was no explosion, thankfully. My first impression was, huh? Whoa, this place is totally sci-fi. Yeah, I, I was kind of thinking the same thing. All right, what do we got? What's that? Is that like a hatch? There's some kind of hatch on the floor, but right now I'm more concerned about that weird device. All right, what is this? What is this device? It looks like some kind of control panel. It's really over the top though, like some kind of military installation or something. Mm. Yeah, it kind of looks like a mech cockpit, right? Uh, Hifumi would probably freak out if he saw it. Cockpit? So the Monokuma room has a control panel that looks like some kind of cockpit. Then could that be... Okay! Alright, let's start poking at it, or whatever. I'm gonna start pushing buttons. Oh, hold on! You can't just or whatever something like this. But it was too late. Hina was already jabbing away at the control panel. Huh? Huh? Do you hear that? Did you hear that? Yeah, I, I think it came from the other room. Hina, what did you push? <laughs> uh, I'm not totally sure, but I think it was that one. The button says data center. Data center? I took a good look at the control panel, and I saw a bunch of buttons, each with the name of a room next to it. Just like Hina said, there was one labeled Data Center. That must be the one she pushed. But the Data Center? That's right next door. The room we were just in. That's where the strange noise came from. I probably better go check it out. Alright, well, yeah. what? Yes, please. I'm kind of scared out of my mind right now, so I'll just cheer you on from over here. Alright. Let's return to the data center. Did I just hear what I think I heard? Yeah. Is that Monokuma? Aha! Uh -huh. 
Hey! Gore, give me all your donuts. Is that you, Hina? What? What? Oh man, busted. How did you know? Say what? Anyway, what is this? Some kind of remote control camera kind of setup? You don't even know what you're controlling? Hello. Well, I mean, I can't really see anything from in here. Found it! Ah, guess what I found? A self-destruct button. Whatever you do, don't push it. Too bad! Oh man. Are you seriously going to push it? Uh, anyway, I guess that settles it. The room with the Monokuma drawing on it and the control panel inside... Controls Monokuma. Yeah. So let's go back inside and talk to Hina. Let's see. Ah! Whoa, hey Makoto, what the heck was that just now? Monokuma. Huh? Huh? What do you mean? What you were controlling just now. It was Monokuma. Huh? Monokuma? Oh! What? For real? Yep. It looks like that panel definitely controls Monokuma. Which means the mastermind has been controlling Monokuma from this room. Yeah, they were definitely in here. The mastermind has been controlling Monokuma from this room. And this control room is totally separate from the data center area with all the monitors. In other words... Hey. Maybe the mastermind can't monitor us and control Monokuma at the same time. Makes sense. Kyoko's theory was right. But... But if the mastermind's been controlling Monokuma from here, that means they've been in the school this whole time, right? I guess that would have to be true. But if that is true... <laughs> so, this is the hint again about uh, the killing game began with 16 participants, and the only people to take a single step since it began were those 16 students. But I noticed it doesn't say anything about anyone who may have already been in here. Then the mastermind, Monokuma's puppeteer, really is 16 students? No, it can't be. There's no way, right? Alright, so we have the Monokuma control room added to the truth bullet section. Um... What's wrong, Makoto? I don't like that face you're making. Oh, no. It, it's nothing. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Oh, she's sad. What about you? Is everything okay? Because, I mean... Oh, well, it's just... This is where the mastermind's been hiding, right? Who knows if they set up traps or something. I can't say it isn't possible, but I really hope it's not true. Um... So, like... So, um... You want to leave soon? There's still lots of other places to check out. Yeah, good point. We can't waste all our time standing around here. Okay, you want to get going? Yeah. Alright, so we will leave here. Click. As soon as the door to the data center was closed, I heard a strange sound. What was that? Oh, oh the door just locked on its own. What? My hand shot out to grab the doorknob. You're right, it's locked. But why? Yeah. <laughs> Of course it's locked, because the data center is now restricted. M Monokuma? Just a second! Hey, no fair. You can't just go around restricting whatever you feel like. Hey! Um... It's for your benefit. Because if that room stays open, I won't be able to move around. <laughs> Imagine how depressed everyone would get if the school mascot just up and stopped moving. Is then that room... Yep. As you may have guessed, that's where my controls are. Um... So, right now, you're being operated by someone in that room. Yes, indeed! Correct the mundo. You're a liar! But that doesn't make any sense. We were just in there, and we didn't see anyone. But there was that hatch we didn't check out. <laughs> oh, you didn't, did you? Are you sure you were as thorough as you could have been? Nope, we didn't do the hatch. N no way! The hatch on the floor? Yep. <laughs> Too bad, that was your one big chance and you blew it. Too bad! Of course, the hatch can't be open from the outside anyway, so whatever. Hmm. Now then, this room is officially restricted, so no more investigating. I'll be relying on you guys to tell the others. Yeah. 
<laughs> um. He's gone, but. So, um. Was he telling the truth? The mastermind was hiding in there? In fact, if you think back to when we got locked out, locked out of the control room, that proves it for sure. Huh? Then when I said we should leave, well, that hatch couldn't be open from the outside anyway, right? So it's not your fault. Sorry. Uh, okay. Anyway, we don't have to let it get to us. We have to stay positive and make the most of the time we have left. You're right. If there's one thing I'm good at, it's keeping my body moving. Okay. Okay, I'm going to run around and tell everyone what we found here. Nice. You've got me all motivated again. You got it. Okay, I'm out. See you later. Tina took off at a full sprint. And I have to do what I can, too. That's the only way forward. Alright, so next we need to find... Okay, so we got the data center. Now we need to check out the headmaster's room. Alright. Let's head on over this way. See what we can find out. Alright, into the headmaster's room. What are we going to find? This is the headmaster's room. I've heard an awful lot about it, but this will be my first time seeing it for myself. Hmm. Ah, Makoto, it's you. Oh, Biakia. Alright. Um, of course, we have a camera. Even in the headmaster's room, there's a surveillance camera. Um, we got some kind of book on his desk. Come on. Hey, Makoto. Not possible. Are you ignoring me? You think I'll forget that just because you're you? Such ignorance. When we get out of here, remember this moment. <laughs> well, you came to the right place this time. Would you like to see something interesting? Sure. What do you mean, something interesting? <laughs> Take a look at this. It was on top of that pathetically ostentatious desk. So, class number 78, student roster. It's the student registry. Hmm. It contains profiles for all of us and Mukuro. So, in other words... Apparently, class number 78 refers to us. Wait, when we found Mukuro's profile in Kyoko's room... I see. That's right. It also mentioned class number 78. That must be where Kyoko got that page. And since the rest of our profiles are listed in there along with hers... In other words... There can be no doubt. Mukuro was a student here at Hope's Peak Academy, just like the rest of us. Mukuro Ikusaba, 16th student. That must be how Kyoko learned about it. <laughs> but it seems that Kyoko was in a hurry. Huh? What do you mean? <laughs> I'm talking about when she stole it. The uneven tearing, the way the paper had been crumpled, she must have been in a hurry. Well, since she snuck in to get it, I'm sure she wanted to get out as fast as possible. But what's your point? <laughs> she was in so much of a hurry that she only got the first page. The first page? <laughs> Correct. Mukuro's profile actually contains two pages. What? So, in other words... In other words, when it comes to this profile... There was more information about Mokuro that we still didn't have. What kind of information is it? Why do you ask me to explain every little thing? You can read, can't you? It seems to be some sort of detailed report put together by the headmaster himself. <laughs> I don't know what kind of man he was, but I'm glad he left us such an interesting clue. I was half listening to Byakya as I skimmed through the report. Mokuro reappeared suddenly, and in the background, an, entire, an entity floats, close but just out of reach. The entity known as the Ultimate Despair. Right now, I can't be sure if this is a single person or some kind of group. Whatever it is, Mokuro definitely has some sort of connection to it. I have a bad feeling about all this. I need to push forward with my research into the Ultimate Despair. And I need to pay attention to Mokuro's behavior, too. This is just my gut feeling, but I think she's dangerous. Despite the countless battles she must have gone through as a member of Fenrir, when she entered Hope's Peak, she didn't display any signs of battle wounds or scars. But the body had 
old wounds. The fact alone proves her tremendous skill in battle. Naturally, I want to believe in her. She's one of my students, after all. But if I decide she's a danger to the other students, I will be forced to take all reasonable measures. Makuro was a part of the ultimate despair. I don't think there can be any doubt about it now. But would not mean Makuro and the Mastermind were allies? So why... Why would they kill Makuro? Plus, even the Headmaster seemed to be afraid of what Makuro was capable of. They would have had to take her completely by surprise to kill her like that. Or maybe it means the Mastermind is even stronger than Makuro was. What? What's wrong, Makoto? Huh? That's fine. You seem to be lost in thought, but I should probably point out one other thing. There's another important bit of information within the file that you should note. What is it? <laughs> Did you notice the picture in there? A picture of a girl perhaps you've never seen before? <laughs> a girl who seems to be included as part of our class number 78? Yeah, I did notice that. That should be enough for you to figure out who the girl is. <laughs> and further information about that girl is included in the file. 5 foot, 7 inches, 97 pounds. It even lists her vitals. 31, 22, 32. <laughs> well, what do you think? What do I think? Are you asking me, like, if she has a nice body? Stop talking. You hopeless idiot. What I'm trying to tell you is maybe you'll want to keep that in mind for later. So when we go re-examine the body, maybe we'll find out that it's not Murphoro. Maybe it's someone else. Maybe you'll make your way back to the corpse, and maybe you'll think, Oh, could that mean... Wait, is he trying to say... There's a chance the body isn't actually Murphoro? Is that what he's saying? That's what I'm hearing. Personally, what I'm thinking seems all but impossible. But it wouldn't hurt to confirm, right? It's all clear now. That's all I was trying to say. What you do with that information is your business. So I'm back to being Byakuya's errand boy. So I wonder if the, the body could have been another female that was stabbed. Maybe, uh... Uh, yeah, I, I wonder. Hmm. Sayaka, hmm. maybe? Oh, and one last thing. It's a bit of advice for me to you, so I suggest you pay attention. Advice for me? Hmm. You seem to be getting along with Kyoko quite well. It's not that we're getting along, she's just done a lot to help me. Hmm. Well, don't put too much faith in her. Huh? In other words... The cost of that fate might be more than you can afford. Well, what are you saying? <laughs> Just what I think. Call it a hunch. Hunch. <laughs> but my hunches tend to be proven right. The advice is free this time. Take it, or don't, as you will. Uh, I'll keep it in mind. Thanks. Hmm. Alright, what else do we have? Can we look at this now? Uh, it's the Class 78 Student Registry. Apparently, that's us. It has profiles on me and everyone I met at the beginning, and Murkuro. Just like us, Murkuro was apparently a new student here at Hope's Peak. Murkuro is a Saba, part of the Ultimate Despair, which means her and the Mastermind should have been allies. But then why would the Mastermind kill her? Weren't they friends? Alright, we got a mess of papers here on the floor. There are documents scattered all over the floor. Somehow it makes me feel anxious. Alright, and we also have a monitor in here. Even in the headmaster's room, there's a monitor. Um, what's with the sword? It looks like the one that we use against Sayaka. There are tro- er, that was used against Sayaka. There are trophies and even a shield in the display case. Hmm. Okay. I guess that's everything in here. Does Byakuya have anything else to say? Hey, Byakuya. I don't have time to play with you. I don't have time to waste on you right now. If you absolutely must talk, go do it as someone else. He's so blunt. It just makes you feel hopeless. Alright, well, I think that's everything we need out of here. So, now let's look and see where else we can go. So, that's everything on the fourth floor, I think. Um, fifth floor has a bunch of stuff, so let's go check that out. This was 
All right, let's look and see where we're heading. Um, okay, so this is where the body was. We don't want to go there yet. We want to go to the biology lab, I think. All the way back here. Let's see what is in here. All right, let's see what's in here. It says raw on the door. Well, here I am in the bio lab. It's so cold. It's like abnormally cold. I feel like I'm in a giant refrigerator. Seriously, why is it so cold? Is this like cryogenic? Like are these cryogenic uh, containers or chambers? There's some kind of weird machine or something built into the wall. And on the left side, there's a bunch of glowing blue lights. But on the other side, um, what's this? Uh, okay, so that's what I just read. I've seen something like this before. Ah, that's it. I've seen this kind of thing in horror movies and stuff. It's a fridge for storing dead bodies. Does that mean this bio lab is actually a morgue? I should probably take a closer look around. Okay. What's under the desk? Or what's with the desk? Oh, there's some kind of booklet here. It looks like an instruction manual. We offer an eco-friendly alternative to standard dry ice for all your cadaver needs. In addition to the germicidal lamps, we also provide an ozone generator for the removal of ethylene gas. Simply insert the cadaver and the blue light will let you know the automated systems have activated. Temperature and humidity levels will be adjusted automatically for optimum settings. With our system, anyone can keep a body fresh and easy for as long as you need. In the unlikely event of a problem, the red light will activate and an alarm will sound immediately. The exterior is stainless steel and we do offer an optional leather upholstery upgrade package. This is the instruction manual for the fridge. Is any of them red? That one, these aren't, these aren't turned on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven not turned on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's 16, so obviously there's a seventh person alive. There's a stack of tarps here. I've been seeing a lot of those lately. All right, and we got the camera. I'm surprised the surveillance camera can work with how cold it is in here. There's icicles on the monitor. There are. <laughs> All right. Um, can we do anything else? Like, these aren't turned on. Um, I guess we can't get any more information from here. Um, yeah, only some of the lights are on. The ones on the left. The right-handed lights are off. Well, looking around, I think I get it. It seems clear to me now. It was a makeshift more. Alright, so we have the Biolab secret. And about those lights by each slot, it looks like it's set up so that when a slot is occupied, the blue light comes on, which would mean inside each slot lit up in blue, another one of the victims is right. I can't let my emotions take control right now. There's only one thing I can do for everyone who's died, and that's to defeat the mastermind. And to do that, I have to continue my investigation. I don't have any other options. I wonder if we're able to, like, open them? Probably not. Um, let's see. That's probably just going to be the same thing. Alright. Yeah, that's just the same thing. I guess that's everything. Alright, let's look at what we have left to do. Alright. Several rooms have been locked up to the point. The headmaster's on the fourth floor, we checked that. The bio lab on the fifth floor, we've done that. The monokuma door in the data center on the fourth floor, we've done that. And the second floor dormitory area. All right, so we got to check the dormitory out next. All right, so let's do that. Second floor. Um, can we check out the dormitory? Where is the dormitory? Alright, let's just go here and see what we can see. 
Um, where would the dormitory be? That's the pool. Um, I am unsure. Okay, this is the library. But there, we should have the dormitory somewhere, right? Let me look on the map again. Maybe I just missed it. Gym, second floor. Um. Well, maybe, maybe it's this. Like, maybe, we can't teleport because we've never been there, possibly? Okay, yeah. So we gotta actually manually go up. So what are we going to find here? The gate's open. We can finally check out the second floor of the dorms. Nice. Which means I have to do it. Let's see what we're going to find. This is the second floor of the dorms. It looks like some ancient ruins. Oh, or no, it's more like a battlefield. Like a bomb flew up here or something. Is there anything we can check? Oh man, this is crazy. We have bathrooms down there. Let's see what's in here. We can't even go in these rooms. It's crazy. Oh, there's a room we can go into. Alright, what have we got here? The bed is completely torn apart. I mean, it's not even really a bed anymore. It's just garbage. Okay. I wonder if they also... I guess we can't check um, their drawer. There's literally nothing else to check besides the bathroom. So let's go look. Open the door just a crack, glance inside, and immediately close it again. There wasn't even a hint of a bathroom. Just a big pile of rubble. Hmm. Okay. So there's like nothing to check in there. And we can't get over there. So let's go look over this way. I mean, I doubt it'll let us go in the bathroom. <laughs> even in a place like this, I can't bring myself to go in. Well, let's check out the boys' bathroom. Well, this place isn't destroyed. There's nothing to look at either, so. Alright, let's leave the area. What else do we got? Is that like blood? What in the world was this? Some graffiti? Okay. Some kind of locker room. This room is filled with lockers. It must have been for the Hope's Peak students who came before us. The class before ours must have used these lockers. Oh man, so many lockers to check. I wonder if I can open this locker. Nope, locked. There's a card reader installed on the door. That must be how you get the locker open. After all, Pretty similar to the card readers for the locker rooms on the second floor of the school. And you have to use your e handbook to open those up. So does that mean? Well, let's just give it a try. I took out my handbook and ran it across the card reader. And then. No luck. Maybe only the locker's owner can open it, which means none of us can do it. And then we got a big plate over some of them. There's a metal plate mounted to the locker. There's no way to get it open. These ones are screwed up. Looks like this locker is already broken. Alright, what about these? Wonder if I can open this locker? Nope. Alright. Probably won't let me get into any of them. Yeah. So, what about right here? Nope. Okay, so they're all going to be locked, and we won't be able to use our e handbook for any of them. Alright. Alright. Is 
there anything we can find in here? I don't think this locker's gonna open. But we found a coin. Alright. These lockers are already broken. I can't imagine any way to get this locker open. I'm not even gonna bother trying. Alright. So, then there's metal plates over these lockers again. Metal plate mounts into the locker. There's no way to get it open. What do we got over here? More metal plates mounted to the locker. I really want to know what it's inside, but there's no way. Okay, do we have anything in the trash can? Can we check the trash can? No. So these are just going to be broken ones again. Um, and then this one is going to be like, you know, we can't open it because we can't. Our, our book isn't going to open these lockers. Alright. So, I guess that's it in here. I don't know if we were supposed to find something in here. Okay, what else do we got? So much... What looks like blood. And then we're back around here. What's here? Is this a dorm room? Whatever this is, is a super nice room. This room doesn't really feel like a student's room. It has a more adult atmosphere. Correct. It is the headmaster's private room. Kyoko! Indeed. I've been through this room several times already, but I still have one little regret. So I decided to check it out one more time. Huh? A regret? What's up? Kyoko looks almost meek right now. She must be thinking about something. I probably shouldn't bother her. Okay, well, let's see what we got. That looks like a secret door. Alright, what's over here? The desk is home to a computer. It must have belonged to the headmaster. Alright. Um. Let me look at the paper. No, okay. sure what all of the things we're supposed to be able to look at over here are. It seems like they're all... Okay. A leather chair. I can't imagine a student using something like this. It must have been the headmasters. So that's two items. There's one more thing. Can I look at the computer itself? There's a PC on the desk. It must have belonged to the headmaster. It would seem... Whoever used this last, it looks like they were very interested in the ultimate despair. The PC still has some search results left on it. Then we might be able to get some info on the ultimate despair. However... There's not much, though. Nothing we don't already know. In other words... The ultimate despair isn't one individual, but instead points to some kind of group. The group was responsible for the tragedy which happened one year ago. They're the worst sorts of people whose driving force comes from despair. However... And that's all there is. Not much to it, is there? <sighs> But I guess that's the best he could do as a complete, uh, Kirigiri failure. But, but any information about the Mastermind is helpful, right? I appreciate whatever info we can get our hands on. Correct. I see. That's a good outlook to have. Okay, so we have the ultimate despair truth bullet now. Alright. What else do we got? We have this opening right here. Huh? There's a strange gap in the wall. Is it some kind of design mistake or construction defect or something. So... There's a gap here, but not just any normal gap. I can feel a breeze coming out. A breeze? Indeed. There's likely an open space on the other side of this wall. Open space? Does that mean... You mean like a hidden room? I think I might know how to open it. You know how to open it? Did you figure out some kind of trick or something? Indeed. A very easy trick, yes. So easy, I'm not sure you can even call it a trick. I saw a program on the PC that I think controls it. Enter the right password and the door should open right up. However... But I don't have a clue what that password might be. All we know is it's probably made up of letters and or numbers. We can't really go from there. You're right, that's not nearly enough to go it's on. It's true. I looked through all of his paperwork, all the files on the PC, everything I could think of. I learned more about him than I had any desire to, but nothing that might have been his password. <sighs> I think I 
think of how much time I wasted on this. Could it be Kyoko? So there's a hidden room she couldn't get into. That's what she meant by regret. I think we can assume that there must be some kind of clue waiting in there. But maybe for her, there's more to it than that. Anyway, if we want to get in there, we need to figure out the password. And if Kyoko can't figure out it out, no way do I stand a chance. No way. There might be a chance. The password could be something Kyoko wouldn't have thought of or something she didn't want to think of. For example, what about your name? What? Huh? Oh, sorry. I was just trying to think of what the password might be. I'm sure she hasn't tried it. I mean, it's totally understandable. After the way she talked about her dad, the idea that he would use her name as his password? Knowing how she is, I bet the idea never even occurred to her. Um, do you mind if I try it, just to be sure? Well? It's not like you need my permission. If you want to try it, try it. Do whatever you want. But okay. Alright, so let's give it a shot. You know, I'm glad I thought of trying Kyoko's name. But if that's not it, that might just hurt Kyoko even more. Hey, if you're worried about me, Makoto, don't be. I already know that your guess is wrong. Okay. In that case, here goes nothing. I collected myself, then turned to face the computer monitor. Let me just type the password here. I typed in her full name, Kyoko Kirigiri. My hands were tense, slightly trembling, and as I finished typing it in... Ooh. It worked! That did it! Kyoko, it worked! Why? <laughs> I don't think she's happy about that. But Kyoko? Without looking at me, she disappeared into the hidden room. She looked grim. Kyoko, let's go in. What's in there? A present? Oh my goodness. Hey, hey, Kyoko? I may as well not even have been in the room. Her gaze was fixed on only one thing. A present? Wrapped and covered with such joy. That's what made it so unusual. There's a brightly colored box here. It seems totally out of place in here. The more I look at it, the more suspicious I get. Should we open it? I'm getting kind of a bad vibe from it. But I mean, we can't not open it. Uh, okay. Makoto. Be careful, Makoto. Why? You think it's dangerous? No, not dangerous. But surprising, probably. Huh? It would seem... If it's what I think it is, at the very least, it's not something you'll be happy to see. Wait, so you know what's in there? Anyway... Just don't scream or anything, okay? Uh-oh, is it gonna be like a dead puppy? Uh, are you saying it's something that'll make me want to scream? Uh, okay, I'm just gonna open it. Step by heavy step, I approach the box. I took a deep breath, then took hold of the lid. Slowly, ever so slowly, I lifted it up. Light began to sneak its way into the box. I stole a hesitant glance inside, and... <gasps> well, we screamed. Kyoko's advice was no use. I let out a trembling cry. What was in the box? It was bones. Human bones. It was the last time, the last thing I expected to find in such a bright, joyful box. I mean, who could have possibly imagined? I see. Just as I thought. What? Just as you thought? How could you have known that? I mean, there were bones in there. Human bones. Wrong. Well, it's not that I was thinking of the bones specifically. I just had a feeling it would be his body. But that's pretty much the same thing. A dead guy in a box? My father. Huh? What about him? Correct. What you found in the box? Those bones. That body. That's my father. Or at least, 
what's left of him. Uh, are you serious? This is Kyoko's dad? The same man she's been searching for? Uh, hold on, how can you know that for sure? How do you know that's him? So... Given all the information we have already, that's the only possible inf the only possible answer. So that same person might, may very well be the mastermind who planned all this out. And according to the files, the headmaster is a man in his late 30s. It seems possible, even likely, that he's somewhere in this school right now. <laughs> and then, it's a very polarizing approach, I know, but okay, enough puns. And then the hint about the killing game began with 16 participants. And the only people to take a single step in Hope's Peak since the killing game began are those 16 students. Alter Ego said the headmaster was probably here in the school, but the only ones who were alive at the start of the killing game were us 16 students. When you put those two ideas together, it doesn't take much to assume in other words. that most likely my father was in the school, but he was also dead. That's my assumption, anyway. As Kyoko explained her analysis, she was completely calm. Or no, she wasn't calm. She was only trying to seem calm. She said it was just as she thought, so she knew it was a possibility. But I have to believe that at some point she wanted to be proven wrong. Which is why she never looked in the box herself, even though she had plenty of chances. I know Kyoko said she wanted to see her father so she could cut off all ties. But was that all there was to it? I gave up some of that pride. In order to enter Hope's Peak, I had to reveal myself to the school. I did it knowing it was something a true Kirigiri detective would never do. Would she really give up her pride just for that? I couldn't help but wonder. Alright. We got the hidden room present. What is this? That looks like a photo of him with uh, Kyoko. Huh? This picture? It's all faded. It must be pretty old. Wait, is this a picture of... Hey, Kyoko. Oh my. Why would you... Well, this is annoying. I came here to cut myself free of the past, and yet... To now find something like this. So what do you expect me to do now? Then I was right. It's a picture of Kyoko when she was a little girl. Knowing the headmaster had this picture all this time, he must have really cared about her. Why? What? I wanted to face him and tell him myself to cut him out of my life for abandoning me. That's the whole reason I came here. And now he's abandoned me again. And this time he even stole the only opportunity I had to move on. Has there ever been a worse father? Kyoko. Alright, so we've got the photo of Kyoko and the headmaster. Alright, can we look in the dresser? This filing cabinet seems like the kind of place you'd find a clue. I should take a closer look. But I don't think Kyoko would like some stranger like me touching her dad's stuff. Hey. It's fine. Check whatever you want. Are you sure? Well, okay then. Alright. I went through each drawer one by one, starting from the top. But all I found were piles and piles of unrelated documents. He was pretty dedicated to his job, huh? Well? It's just because he didn't have anything else. He could have inherited our family business, our legacy. Instead, he left it all behind. Now, if... If he couldn't even handle a job like this, he would have been that much more of a failure. I'm sure he can't, couldn't stand the thought of that, and it made him desperate. Alright, what else do we have? We have the drawer over here. The headmaster's desk. It's probably hiding some kind of clue, so I really want to check it out, but... I really don't want to touch Kyoko's dad's desk without her permission. Hey. Don't worry about me. Feel free to look around as much as you like. Are you sure? Because... Never let anything get in the way of the investigation. I don't. Well, okay then, if you don't mind. Alright, so what do you got? Starting from the top, I opened all the desk drawers and looked inside. 
I rummaged through each one, finding nothing but unrelated documents. But in the last drawer... Huh? Is this... It's an e-handbook, right? And it has a label on it that says, In Case of Emergency. Hey, Katie Cat. <laughs> Welcome. How are you today? I'd found some kind of emergency handbook in the headmaster's desk. In other words... A handbook with no limitations given to the school's ultimate authority, the headmaster. I'm assuming that's what that is. I think you're probably right. It would seem... It might prove useful as we continue our investigation. Why don't you hold on to it? I wonder if we could use that on the lockers in, on the second floor. Huh? But Kyoko... I... I don't need it. If you don't want it, go ahead and leave it here. Uh, then I guess I'll take it. Is it really okay? Alright, maybe we can use that on the lockers that we couldn't get into. Hey! Listen, Makoto. Hmm? Can I ask you a favor? Sure, what's up? What is it? So... I know it's completely unreasonable to ask you this, and I know it'll only inconvenience you that much more, but... Hey! Could you leave? Huh? Correct. Just for a little while. I'd like to be alone for a bit. K Kyoko, don't worry, I'm fine. I just need to calm down a little. Just a second. Get my emotions in order. You know, Kyoko, you told me before about the relationship you had with your dad, how you're only connected by blood, not by heart and soul. But maybe that picture motivated him. Maybe he hoped uh, to see me again someday. Is that what you were going to say? If so, it's just a theory, and this isn't an issue that can be settled with theories. That picture doesn't change the facts of what happened, what I went through. I... That problem can't be solved so easily. You're right. I'm sorry. Anyway... Once I've gotten myself under control, I'll return to the investigation immediately. So please, just give me some time to myself. Uh, okay, I understand. And I'll see you later. All right, so I think I want to go. Is she really okay? Kyoko, it must have been a complete shock to her. I mean, it was a shock to me. Yeah, to find out what happened to the headmaster. There's no doubt the mastermind performed that evil deed. They killed the headmaster, killed Kyoko's father. They killed him. The headmaster is dead. And the, yeah, and this is Alter Egos again saying the one leading the Hope's Peak staff, the one who finalized the plan to isolate you, was the Hope's Peak headmaster. So that same person may very well be the mastermind who planned all this out. And according to the files, the headmaster is a man in his late 30s. It seems possible, even likely, that he's somewhere in this school right now. Hmm. But we were wrong about that. The headmaster wasn't the mastermind, which means the mastermind's true identity is <laughs> one of the students, right? I'm sure I told you this already, but this is the message about the killing game began with the 16 high school students. And the only people who have taken a step into Hope Speak since it began were those 16 students. So it's got to be one of them, right? Fifteen of us met in the ma uh, mail hall. Add Mukuro to the mix and you get sixteen. And including me, only six of us are still alive. Everyone else is dead. Even Mukuro. Even she's undeniably dead. So the ones still left alive are me, Yakia, Eo, Toko, Hina, and Kyoko. Only those six people are still alive. Then there's no question. Wait, no, that can't be. I refuse to believe it. There has to be some other way. It just has to be. Uh, 
Alright, um, can we check the computer for anything else? Alright, so, probably not. Alright, let's head out. Leave the area, yes. I wonder if we can... Let's see if we can get into the lockers now with this key card. Will it let us, um, open any of them? Which, let's try this one. I wonder if I can open up this locker and then try the um, the e handbook that we just got. So you have to use your e handbook to open them up. Ours isn't going to work, but can we use maybe only the locker's owner can open it, which means none of us can do it. Wait, but what about the emergency handbook I found in the headmaster's hidden room? Okay, let's give it one more try. Will it work? I took the emergency handbook and ran that across the card reader and... Alright, just what I was hoping for. Now let's see what we've got inside. This locker is totally disorganized. Whoever it belongs to has organization problems in every part of their life. Okay, um... This is a crystal ball. Looks like, this looks like Hero's Locker. Huh? A crystal ball? No, it can't be. There's no way he ever used this locker. It's just not possible. What do we have? There's all kinds of textbooks and notebooks stacked up in no particular order. And dust everywhere. I have to assume whoever stuff this is didn't do a lot of studying. Not that I can really talk. I'm trying to act as casual and natural as possible, I picked up one of the notebooks I saw. But the moment I looked inside the notebook, any sense of easiness I may have had evaporated. Yes, yeah, so hero. Yep, it's hero's notebook. There was no denying what I saw. Inside the notebook was written, Yasuhiro Hagakuri. Is this our Yasuhiro? The notebook also contained a large number of notes for a variety of different classes, which would mean he attended classes here. No, that can't be possible. I mean, Hero came to this school at the same time as the rest of us. Or did he? And we were all sucked into this evil world. We never had a chance to take any classes. So what is this notebook? Is, is Hero the mastermind? Mm. We got some instant stick here. Uh, is this a deck of playing cards? Nope, they're tarot cards. But wait, aren't those used for telling fortunes? It's just a coincidence, right? I don't know about that. Let's check this locker. I took the emergency handbook and ran it across the card reader. Alright, whose locker is this? I don't see anything that might be a clue. Okay. Let's just check these other three or four. Um, okay, so we do have something in here. This thing is practically empty. But we have a card of some sort. Oh, some kind of pocketbook. I don't see a name written on it, so I can't say for sure whose it is, but there's some writing inside. It could be important. I don't like violating the owner's privacy, but I'd better take a look. It looks like a girl's handwriting. All the letters are spaced out even, evenly, like whoever wrote them was measuring them. Whoever wrote this must have been really meticulous. Huh? I was flipping through the pocketbook, but my hand froze when I got to a certain page. I saw something familiar written there. Words I'd heard before. There's a plan to turn Hope's Peak into a shelter and isolate the students here in a communal life. I decided to talk to the one who came up with the plan directly. It just so happens to be the headmaster and my father. He was willing to give me some more details regarding the plan. Here's what he said. The point is to keep our student prodig prodigies safe, to keep them as our hope for the future. Only their genius can overcome disaster, and only their hope can overcome despair. For the future of our country, our world, it's not an exaggeration to call this our final hope. 
we must isolate our superior youth from the corrupted world to stay, serve as the foundation for a new era. This is the only hope we have. I hope that you'll be willing to go along with this plan. So that's what my father had to say to me. As usual, he made a selfish decision without consulting anyone else. I can't imagine a worse father. Oh boy, this can't be true, can it? But I knew it was, and I knew exactly who the pocketbook belonged to. Kyoko, it couldn't be anyone else. But if this belongs to Kyoko, what was it doing in this locker? And what she wrote here completely contradicts what she already told me. She said she hasn't seen her dad since he left when she was little. Hmm. I decided to talk to the one who came up with the plan directly. Just so happens to be the headmaster and my father. What does this all mean? I quickly scanned the remaining pages of the notebook. I must have been looking for something that would prove me wrong about this whole thing. When I reached the last page, the question marks spinning through my mind just started spinning that much faster. When I looked at it, unlike the rest of the pocketbook, the writing here was messy, disorganized, scrawled. Uh-oh. Is she the headmaster? I mean, the uh, mastermind? What is this? What does it mean? I have no idea. How could this possibly make any sense? Despair walks among us, and so we survive. There's a second despair. Hmm. So we have the locker pocketbook, okay? But the more I see, the less sense it makes. Because these lockers, I mean, they had to belong to the previous students, right? So why am I seeing this? Why are there things in these lockers that look like they belong to people here? A notebook that seems like it belongs to Hiro? And a pocketbook that seems like it belongs to Kyoko. Hmm. There has to be some kind of explanation. But if I want to find that out, I have to keep moving the investigation forward. And I have to believe in everyone. Alright, what else do we have in the lockers? Was that the one I just checked? Um, nope, don't see anything that could be a clue. Alright, what about this one? Um... Locker open. What's inside? Nope, I don't see anything. We got over here. Just just the one, I believe. And let's see. Looks like the locker open. And I don't see anything that might be a clue. So we only had the two clues there. Alright. Yeah, those are the only ones that we can open. Alright, let's leave this area. she talk to us again? Like, if we go in there? I wonder if she'll talk to us. She may just want us to go away. I don't know. There's all kinds of stuff I want to talk to her about, but I better give her some more time. Alright. Well, in that case, I think we have investigated all of the new areas. So, we have investigated the headmaster's room, the bio lab, and the monokuma door in the data center, and the second floor of the dormitory area. So now we need to go check out the garden and the dojo. Okay. So let's go do that. Let's check. Um, let's check the garden first, I think. It was, that's the data center. That is the headmaster's room. We've already checked those. Um, where? I'm trying to remember where it's at. Okay, so wait. This is where I'm at. Is it on the fifth floor? Yeah, okay. Fifth floor. We have three things to check up there. Alright, so let's check the guards first. Let's rock and roll. Alright, is the body still here, I wonder? Hmm. Um. Huh? It's gone. Mercuro's body is not here. Where did it go to? 
Did the plants eat it? There are still just four chickens left. Honestly, I'd be kind of terrified if there were more than that. Let's just check everything. Why do they even need all these monitors? A normal PA announcement will work just as well. Maybe it's just to give us something to look at. Are the sprinklers still set? The sprinkler control panel, they're set to turn on at 7.30 a.m. every morning. And Monokuma said the time positively could not be changed. All right. What about the flower? The Monokuma flower. Is it true? Does it really eat paper, plastic, and people? Well, I don't think it's related to the case, so I'd better keep my distance. Unless it ate the body. All right. Uh, the area gets soaked by sprinklers every day, right? And it doesn't break the camera? <sighs> All right. Let's check the shed. Maybe... Maybe she got moved to the shed somehow? Maybe the body is inside the tool shed. I'd better check just to be sure. Let's see. I didn't find anything even close to a dead body. But if it's not here either, then it must be... Could it be in the bio lab? But corpses aren't the only thing I need to check in here. There's one other thing. That tarp. A tarp played a key role in another case, so... I'd better look into it. Alright, let's check out the tarp. The killer used the tarp to keep the sprinklers from getting the body wet, which means the killer might have left some clue behind here. Huh? I didn't notice this before, but there's a small stamp on one corner of the tarp. It says Biolab? Then this originally came from the Biolab. Alright, so we have the tarp has been added to our truth bullets. I don't think there's anything else we need to check here, but let's just quickly check. Nothing seems out of the ordinary here. Um, this is the lawnmower. It's not related. Um, this is what? Fertilizer, I think. Do they use this to help the Monokuma flower grow? Not related. These are garden hose. Not related. Um, anything that sticks out about them? Nope. No matter how hard I look, I don't see anything. Let's check out that pickaxe one more time that pickaxe. On the handle it says Crazy Diamond. It's the same thing that was written on the back of Mondo's coat. The pickaxe is connected to Mondo somehow. Strange. Alright. I think that's everything. Alright. Can we go check out the bio lab again? Alright. That's all I really needed to check here. Alright. Let's go... I want to see if we can go to the bio lab. Um, no, it was on the third floor, I think. Or was it second floor? Let's see. Where was it? It's not here. Where was it? Too many floors. <laughs> Garden, dojo. Oh, it's on the floor we're on. Okay. Let's go back to... Let's get out of here then and let's go back to the bio lab and see... Um, let's just check it out before we go back to the dojo. Um, because I'm curious about the body. Like, because her body has to be here, right? But there was only... Seven, uh, wait, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's only nine. There's seven undone. Let's see what we can find. There's, um, the, the weird machine built into the wall. Ones on the left are on, and the ones on the right are not. But we can't check anything else. We may we just have to go check the dojo. I don't think there's anything we can check right here, so I want to like look in there, but I guess we'll have to wait on that. Let's go to the dojo and check it out. Alright. This is where we found the arrows. So let's see. Okay, we have Toko here. Oh, Toko, so this is where you were. What do you want? Am I so disgusting? You want me out of your, your sight? 
No, that's not it at all. I just thought maybe you found a clue. <laughs> well, I haven't. I didn't find anything. Not one single clue. <laughs> I figured since this place was re related to the case, it would have to, to have something, right? But there wasn't anything out of the ordinary here. <laughs> Give it back. Give me back my precious time. Calm down, Choco. What's your problem? Don't tell me to calm down. Do you have any idea what I'm going through right now? When everyone finds out, they're gonna call me useless, good for nothing. Nobody's gonna say that. <laughs> Master Will. I'm not sure I can disagree with that. <laughs> I don't want that. I'm sick of uh, always being looked down on. Why won't well, anyone accept me? Um. Well, I don't think there are any clues here, so maybe I'm gonna get going. <laughs> Alright, um, let's just look just in case. The target seems pretty far away. I'm always amazed to see what people can do with a bow and arrow. Alright, is there anything in the tree? The cherry tree is in full bloom. Um,. That's gonna say the same thing, right? Yeah, nothing strange about that. This is the monitor. One of the monitors it's just showing the school crest. Better that than some freaky monocle in a TV show or something. What about this armor? Suit of armor on display is extremely Japanese. Anything about the walkers over here? I can totally imagine Sakura out here using this to train. There's our camera. We also got all these certificates up here. From the bottom of my heart, I just really wanna... Maybe it'll just, uh, <laughs> maybe I'll just bust it up for real. And then the locker. There's a bunch of wooden lockers here. We found a clue in here, but it was just a mastermind's attempt to frame Kyoko. And Kyo uh, Toko doesn't have anything else to say, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Why is e e everything? Alright. Yeah, we're just gonna head out. Okay, so... I guess that's it. Hope we found everything. Um, this is a school announcement. Okay. Is everyone working hard? Yeah. Is your investigation coming along nicely? Mm -hmm. Well then, since you're all giving it your best, your generous headmaster will give you a little hint. Right. <laughs> For those of you who are interested, please make your way to the gym ASA possible. Okay, I guess we're going to the gym. What? Now he wants to give us a hint? It's suspicious. There's no doubt about that. This could be a trap, but even knowing that, he said to go to the gym, right? All right. Hero. Hmm. Oh, hey, Hero. <laughs> Makoto. Why'd you act so surprised? Uh, um... No reason. You heard Monokuma's announcement, right? Are you here to find out what he has to say? <sighs> uh, I... I just did, actually. I'm on my way out. You already talked to him? What did he say? Listen, sorry, but, but I... <sighs> Here to go! Hero, wait! That's very suspicious. There was no point in trying to stop him. He ran off like a frightened animal. Hit Hero? It was like he was trying to avoid me. I was hoping to talk to him about the notebook I found in the locker. Has he been hiding something this whole time? Okay, are we about to walk into a trap? What's going on? What do we got here? I am Monokuma! Hello, welcome, welcome, hello. Are you ready for your final hint? Well, it just so happens to be the envelope on the ground in front of you. The envelope? This? This must be the envelope. <laughs> and just so you know, I won't be answering any questions about what you find inside. 
What? Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, just get on with it. Monokuma's cryptic words didn't make me feel any better, but I picked up the envelope and opened it. Okay, what do we got? What I found was a single photograph. Uh-huh. It featured a bunch of faces I recognized extremely well. Basically, everybody but us. It was everyone who'd come to Hope's Peak at the same time as me. Wait, but there's someone behind Sayaka. She's the only one I don't recognize. Wait, that's not true. I do recognize her. That's right. When Diakia and I were in the headmaster's room and we looked at that file, Mukuro Ikusaba. Then this girl is... What? Why? Why is Mukuro here with everyone else? And even more than that. Just having everyone here pose like this is weird enough by itself. And we're all wearing matching uniforms. It doesn't make any sense. Are we actually here somewhere? I don't see us in the picture. Unless I'm blind, I see everyone but us. Hmm. And now that I'm looking at it, it's... It's not even everyone. Yeah, because we're not in it. I'm not in the picture. I'm the only one not there. The picture has all 15 other students, but not me. I guess that makes sense. After all, I don't remember ever taking a picture like this. I went to junior high with Sayaka, but the first time I met everyone else was when I arrived here at Hope Speak Academy. So it's natural for me not to be in this picture, but what's definitely unnatural is that everyone else is in the picture. I thought everyone was like me and didn't know each other till they got here. But if this picture is real, then could that mean, could it be everyone else and just me? Everyone here except me is... <laughs> How long are you going to keep up this rambling soliloquy of yours, Hamlet? What are you going to do? You're kind of getting in the way standing there, you know? Hmm. So, I mean, get out. But... But, How strange. I told you, I'm not fielding any questions. Unbelievable. What kind of mystery would this be if I gave you all the answers? That'd be totally out of left field. And now he's malfunctioning again. I guess that means he's done talking. Okay, so we have the group photo in our truth bullets. What now? So in the end, all I found in the gym was even more confusion. And with that confusion in hand, I left the gym dejected. Hmm. What now? How does that count as a hint? It just made me even more confused. Is that what Monokuma was going for? Did he put together a fake photo just to confuse me? But it looks so real, so full of life. How could anyone fake that? And it's not the first photo we've seen where dead students were all together in a photo. Which would mean everyone but me... Hmm. Maybe I should just ask everyone directly. That should clear all this up. No. I have to clear all this up. Alright. Alright, I guess let's find people. The question is, where did we find people? Maybe we can start with Kyoko. Um, what's over here? Is this the archive? Okay. Um, sure. Let's, let's go talk to Biakia. Alright. Where? Right here. Let's go into the library. Then go into the archive. Is there anything new in here? Is that new? Maybe this letter was part of Monokuma's setup too? Maybe he wanted us to find it and then he acted all upset and crazy. I'm sure anyone watching the broadcast would just eat that kind of drama up. Alright. I don't think there's... 
I don't know if there's necessarily anything else new here. Oh, Biafia. Listen, do you think we can talk? Biafia? That's enough. I have nothing to talk to you about. Hm. Don't talk to me as if we're friends. Hey, Biafia, wait! But of course he didn't. He just walked away. What the... Why was he acting like that? Like he was purposely trying to avoid me. Okay. What is going on? Alright, um... What about... Is there anything else in the art? It still says there's something there. Is there anything else in the archive that we can look at? Is there anything here we could examine? The wooden box is still empty. I can't imagine how the lamp is important. I have better things right now uh, to do right now than sort through a bunch of old files. Probably nothing here then. The document about the secret council revealing the kind of truth a commoner shouldn't go near, but I don't have time to think about this right now. Alright, these are a bunch of investigation reports related to different cold cases, but I don't have time to think about this right now. Alright, so that's all there is. There's nothing to do in here then. Let's go find other people. Alright. Where else can we find people? Let's see. Um. Maybe. Alright, let's go back to the garden. No, the Jojo. Um. And see if we can talk to Topo. Like, maybe she'll acknowledge our existence. Let's see. She's not here anymore. Okay. Um. This is so weird. What about... The bio lab. Is there anything else in the bio lab? I think if there's nothing here, we'll go to um, the headmaster's office and see if Kyoko will talk to us. I decided to visit the bio lab one more time, and the first thing I saw when I got there, uh oh, was her passed out again. Huh, Toko? Uh, what? T Toko, are you okay? No, no. She's not dead, is she? Oh, dear. Oh, just what I wanted. It's cold. It's super cold. It's so cold, I think I might catch cold. If you keep taking naps in places like this, I'm sure you will. I see. What? I was asleep? Uh, I must have fainted again. Uh -huh. I bet you were standing there staring at me, getting all excited, weren't you? No, I wasn't. Hmm? Oh, have then. you reached what? that certain... Okay, um, so why did you pass out? <laughs> I don't know. Last thing I remember was me waking up just now. What'd you do to Miss Morose? Oh, that's right. Your memory stops and starts each time you switch. <laughs> Bingo bazinga. We share some basic knowledge, but our memories are very much separate. You SOB! And don't say it like it's a bad thing. It's a blessing as far as I'm concerned. Because <laughs> even if she forgets something, I totally remember. Yes! So, it's like double the memory. Uh, no, it's more like half. Alright, so we have Genocide Jack's memory. But all I want to know right now is, where's my little darling? Tell me now or I slit your throat. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure Biaki is around somewhere doing his own investigating. Mm, yes, yes. By himself? I assume so. <laughs> I'm I on knew fire. it. I totally knew it. I'm a total pro when it comes to all things master. <laughs> anyway, I gotta hurry. I can't even imagine how lonely he must be right now. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be thrilled to see you. 
Toko shot off, her eerie laughter echoing behind her. I totally forgot to ask her about the picture. Well, there's no point in asking Genocide Jack anyway. Besides, I have more important things to do right now. Why did Toko faint? There's got to be some reason for it. Yeah, it's going to be the body opened out of cold storage. The fridge is open. But I'm sure they were all shut tight last time I was here. That must be why she passed out. Right. She faints so easily. K Kyoko. Makoto. It's getting late, isn't it? Are you okay? Indeed. I'm sorry if I made you worry. No, you don't have to apologize. Listen. But listen, about this room. Oh yeah, it's... It would seem... It's a morgue. It's, yeah. I knew it. I suspected as much. And Toko must have looked inside the fridge, seen what was in there, and... Well, there you have it. You knew she fainted? Indeed. I was on my way here when Genocide Jack came running past me. I assumed she must have sneezed, but once I got inside, the real reason became clear. It would seem... I imagined she came here to investigate, and when she opened the slot there, that's when she saw the body inside and dropped like a bag of rocks. Why has everything got to be so difficult with her? Anyway... Anyway, we should close it up. Don't want to leave it hanging open like that. Yeah, good idea. Makoto. Give me a hand with this. Kyoko approached the fridge, hands outstretched. But suddenly, she stopped. What's wrong? Listen. Maybe we should wait a second before closing it. Huh? How come? Because Mukuro's body is in here. Mukuro's corpse? Mokuro's body is in the, inside the fridge? I see. Just like every other time, the Mastermind probably brought it up here while we were in the class trial. Mastermind did it? Because they assumed we wouldn't be doing the class trial over again, I guess. So... You may be right. Either way, now I can finally get a good look at the body. Well, that's right. Kyoko didn't get a chance to check the body during the last investigation. Makoto. I need to do my own examination of the corpse as soon as possible. I'm going to find a clue this time, and I'm going to grab the mastermind by the tail. Okay, so what should I do? So then... Why don't you just wait over there? I'll let you know as soon as I'm finished. Just wait over there, that's it. Alright, so what are we looking at? Maybe we can look at the tarp again. You know, I think I've seen a tarp like this somewhere before. Yeah, it was the bio lab, or the one in the garden. It's the same one I found in the tool shed. And if I remember that tarp, it had a stamp on it that said bio lab. And that's the tarp that was used to help camouflage the murder in the garden. At some point, someone got it from the bio lab and took it over there. All right, so maybe... I wonder if Mukuro was dead already. One of the students wasn't dead. Hmm. I don't know. Anything over here that we can look at? I've already looked through this instruction manual. More importantly... Let's see. On the left side, the, uh, the refrigerator, a bunch of blue lights are on. And these ones aren't. It would seem... The blue light comes on when a slot is occupied. So when someone's in there, the blue light comes on. Looking around, the number of lights that are on, including Mercuro's, there's nine in all. Nine. Nine lights? Alright. It's a fridge meant for storing dead bodies. I can't do it. I can't look inside. Can we talk to Kyoko? I should ask Kyoko about that group photo. After all, she's in it too. Don't let me interrupt your investigation, but I wanted to talk to you about something. What is it? It's about that announcement Monokuma made earlier. <sighs> you mean the one about a hint or something? I didn't take him up on the offer. Huh, why not? Because... The only reason he'd give us a hint at this point would be to confuse us, to cloud our judgment. I can solve this mystery on my own, without whatever hints he may have to offer. That's a good point. I wish I could go back and do the same thing, but what's done is done, I guess. Standing here looking at her, I don't think she's hiding anything from me. 
is she right? Did the mastermind forge that picture as a trap to confuse us? That's gotta be it. There's no other explanation. <sighs> okay, Makoto, I'm done. Already? Goodness, that was fast. Indeed. Anyone can do work if they go slow. In that spirit, I'll make my report brief. So did you find anything? Indeed. I paid careful attention to the wounds and the traces of blood, and it seems highly likely that the stomach wound and blow to the back of the head were inflicted after death. Really? The burnt tissue made things a little dip it, uh, difficult, but I'm completely confident in my findings. So that means neither of those were the fatal injury, right? Then what was the fatal injury? Due to the explosion, the victim's identity is unknown. They were, however, dead before the blast. The victim had been stabbed a single time with a knife, which went completely through the body. They had also been struck in the head with an object about as thick as a metal pipe. The body was covered with other wounds, but these were at least several days old. The only option is those other wounds, but the files said they were old. Is that right? Where does it say they're old? Huh? Because... All the Monokuma file says is that they were inflicted at least several days ago. I guess I don't see the difference. Wrong. Well, the difference is immense considering the impression they give. Listen. You seem to be equating several days old with simply old. However. But that doesn't quite follow logically. Old wounds, it makes it sound like they've been there forever and they're not related to the murder. Are you saying they are? But we all got the Monokuma file right after she was killed, right? So if the runes were at least a few days old, there's no way they could have had anything to do with it. So then... But what if Mukuro herself wasn't killed within the last few days? What? At the very least... Certainly you can allow it as one of the many possibilities, can't you? One of many? Right. A detective doesn't have supernatural powers. There's no way to predict the answer from the beginning. Instead, the ideal detective begins by imagining as many possible scenarios as they can. In other words... They envision these possibilities without prejudice, without bias, using only their logic and common sense. Then, as they investigate, they test what they find against each of these possibilities. <laughs> of course, me telling you this doesn't mean you'll be any good at detective work. But beyond using that to solve this particular mystery, you should uh, keep it in mind for the future. Okay. Hey. So if there's anything else you'd like to know about the condition of the body, now's the time. Come to think of it, there was one more thing. Earlier, when I was looking at Mukuro's profile, it listed her height and weight. So... 5 foot 7 inches, 97 pounds, and vitals were 31, 22, 32. Did I get that right? You remembered all that? They are indeed consistent with the corpse. So then... Indeed. And don't forget about the Fenrir tattoo. There's absolutely no mistake. Indeed. Our victim in this case is, without a doubt, Mukuro Ikasaba. Okay. So her profile has been updated. And? Is that all you wanted to ask? Yeah, I think so. So then? Then it looks like we have no further business with Murkrow's body. Let's get going. It's kind of chilly in here. Oh wait, are we not going to put the body back? Don't you think it's kind of sad leaving it out like this? Why? Sad? Did you forget she was our enemy once? A part of the ultimate despair. But, but she still got killed. She's still a victim. Hey. Have you ever heard the phrase, you reap what you sow? Well, yeah, but still. Whew. You really are naive, you know that? It's really quite appalling. But she could have abandoned me, but she decided to help me instead. So for someone like that, what does it mean to be naive? So then. I think we've done all we can do here. Back to our separate investigations, yes? Uh, hold on. I still have one more thing to do. Something I need to talk to Kyoko about. Yes, the, the pocketbook. I need to ask her about the pocketbook I found in that locker. If I don't do it now... Hey, Kyoko? I do have one last thing. I know I shouldn't, but I feel like I have to ask. What? Go ahead then. Out with it. 
Have you really not seen your dad even once since you got here? What? So... What do you mean? Well, you know all those lockers on the second floor of the dorms? Indeed. I do, yes. But to get into any of the lockers, you'd need the handbook of whoever the locker belongs to. Actually, I managed to get them open using that emergency handbook. I see. The one you found in the headmaster's hidden room. And? So, did you find anything worthwhile in the lockers? I found a pocketbook, and after looking through it, I think it must be your pocketbook. Why is that? What makes you say that? Because... Like I said, only the locker's owner should be able to get into it, right? I can't imagine any of those lockers, or I can't imagine those lockers belong to any of us. After all, we only got access to that area just recently. What I'm saying is, there's no way I could have had access to any of those lockers. And if I did have a pocketbook, why would I bother putting it in a locker? Everything you just said makes perfect sense. But there was something written inside. It was about the headmaster, about your father. What? If that's true... Could that mean... That video is real too? Video? Makoto. Makoto, I think everything is finally starting to fit together to reveal a cohesive picture. Although I'm afraid that picture might be worse than anything we could have imagined. But what are you talking about? I... I need to go investigate those lockers right now. I need to confirm what you said with my own two eyes. Oh, let me give you the handmaster's handbook. That way you can... So... That won't be necessary. If I'm right about this, I shouldn't have any problem opening the locker with my own handbook. After all, it would seem that it's my locker. Your locker? Makoto. If you watch this, it'll all make sense. A DVD? And it says Class 78 Urgent Interview? So... I found it in that hidden room after you left. Anyway... I don't have time to explain exactly what I think it means, so just watch it for and see for yourself. I think you'll realize exactly what it means. You'll understand why you found my pack, my pocketbook in a place none of us have ever seen before. None of this makes sense right now. But I guess that means there's some important clue on this DVD. Alright, so I guess that means we gotta go to the uh, A room, right? Oh, and it, now it's my turn. Do you have a second to listen to me ramble? Sure. Ramble? In other words... So, as it turns out, the arrangements I'd made didn't stick. What I mean is, I'm less and less sure of everything, even my own feelings. You're talking about your dad, right? I could never find the answers to the questions I wanted to ask for the rest of my life, all, and all because of the mastermind. However, but there's one thing I am sure of. When it comes to the mastermind, there's no room in my heart for forgiveness. I... I swore to destroy the mastermind. This is just one more reason to follow through on that. Kyoko's eyes burned with the fire of determination. The determination to defeat the mastermind. Hmm. It's strange to be confronted with his death and suddenly feel this way. I couldn't care less if my father had found happiness. Why? So why is it? Why does it bother me so much to know how he suffered? It's ridiculous. There's just no understanding it, I guess. She let out a small laugh as she said it. But her smile was filled with sorrow. Whew. So that's it for my rambling. And there's still much to do before I can consider my task complete. Yeah, you're right. Hey. But keep this in mind. There is only ever one absolute truth. Whether that truth ser serves justice or suffering, whether it's the greatest truth or the worst... What do you mean? Makoto. Even if the truth you uncover is filled with hopelessness... You still can't give up hope. Uh, absolutely not, because... Because all I can do is keep moving forward. That's pretty much all I'm good at, you know? <laughs> Indeed. Sorry if that was strange. So then... Anyway, I need to get going. I'll see you at the class trial. Leaving behind that final farewell, Kyoko was gone. I'd better get going myself. I got that DVD from Kyoko. I should head to the AV room to check it out. Kyoko said something about hopeless truth. But no matter what happens, I won't lose hope. Even if it's the worst truth in the world. I can't afford to lose. Alright.
Let's get to the AD room. That's gonna be um not in the dormitory. Okay. Um yeah, I don't think it's out here. Those are all the what's over here? This is the dining hall. I could um go see what's up with uh Tina. Where right here. Let's go see if she has anything to say about the photograph. Alright. So this is where you've been hiding. Listen, I was hoping to talk to you. Oh! Makoto! Uh... Sorry, just gotta go. What? She ran off so fast I didn't even have time to ask her to stop. Tina, why? Why won't you talk to me? Alright, so something is definitely going on. Let's get to the AV room. Um, let's see. That's right there. Okay. So let's teleport right there. And then let us go to the AV room. Right here. What is on this DVD, I wonder? Moment of truth. Alright, let's see. This should be able to play DVDs just fine. Well then, I better take a look. I took the DVD Kyoko gave me and put it in the player. What are we going to see? It said that it was playing, but nothing appeared on the screen. I stared into the black of the monitor. It must have only been a few seconds. But to me, it felt like an eternity. And then, all of a sudden, an image appeared. This is Sayaka? It took me by total surprise. I hadn't seen Sayaka in who knows how long, and there she was. Okay then, are you ready to begin? The voice I heard was of the man positioned on one side of the screen. It was the voice of a middle-aged man. I do apologize, but I hope you don't mind if I record our conversation. I'm a little slow, you know. I never really got the hang of taking notes while having a conversation. It sounded like he was trying to make a joke, but Sayaka's tense face didn't move a single millimeter. So this video is meant to serve as a kind of contract substitute. It's not that I don't trust you guys. It's more like insurance so please don't worry too much hmm. now then let me get straight to the point there is a chance that you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school really can you accept that uh, um you you want me to accept that sayaka was obviously at a total loss it made total sense who would agree to spending the rest of your life in this school i I accept. What? Thank you. And I'm sorry about all this. Well, I can promise you that I will do everything in my power to keep you safe. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, I give you my word. Okay. What in the world? As if on cue, that's where the video cut out. What? There was a lot I hadn't understood up till now. But this, only this, I simply couldn't comprehend what I heard. Because I know how much Sayaka wanted to get out of here. I know how much she wanted to escape and pursue her dreams with her friends again. She wanted that so bad, she tried to frame me for murder. So why? Why would she say yes to living here for the rest of her life? As I sat there trying to think about it, I noticed a sudden light. On the monitor, the video I thought was finished flashed back on screen. My eyes started back to the screen. And if I was confused before, what I saw next pushed me right over the edge. Huh? What I saw was me. 
Impossibly, undeniably me. So, Makoto, before we begin, I should let you know that I'll be recording our conversation. Yes. Me and the headmaster were looking at each other. He and I were having what seemed like a fairly normal conversation. But I, the I in here and now, had absolutely no memory of it. I had no memory of even meeting the headmaster, much less sitting down to talk to him like this. Now, shall we get straight to the point? Makoto, there's a chance you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? Yes. This can't be real. I said yes? I'm sorry I'm putting you through all this. Well, I mean, we don't have much of a choice, do we? But I promise that as long as you're in this school, I will do everything I can to protect you. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, that's the very least I can do for you. Hmm. So weird. Once again, the video cut out. From there, the video repeated the same scene again and again with the others. that they agreed to live in this school forever. And then... Kyoko. Her interview with him had been recorded just as clearly. Without a doubt, she had met him. She sat down with the headmaster of Hope Speak Academy, her father. And when he asked her his question, she answered the same as everyone else. She accepted a life within the school. Just as Kyoko's interview was wrapping up, the monitor suddenly went black. Huh? It wasn't just the monitor. The DVD player itself had apparently turned off, which, of course, meant that the DVD wasn't playing anymore. Well, what just happened? Say what? Oopsie, looks like it broke out of service. What? It just so happened to break just now? Too bad. Now then, when does it matter? Failure can strike anywhere, anytime. <laughs> That's what failure is, right? That guy. You cut the power on purpose. Well, whatever. Even if I watched the whole thing, it'd just be more of the same. He'd ask them the question, and they'd all say yes. I couldn't help myself. I let out a huge, exasperated sigh, but as I did, I remembered something. That's right. I fainted too, and when I woke up... I noticed a strange feeling of separation within myself, a disconnect. It would seem... Thinking back on it now, at that point, my memory was gone. At that time, I had forgotten. I couldn't remember why I'd come to this school, and I couldn't remember what my ultimate ability was. But what would make you forget all that? Hey. Strange, isn't it? It's hard to imagine it happened by chance. It seems much too convenient. A convenient outcome? Something that seemed to obviously work in favor of the mastermind? So does that mean I've lost my memory too? What about the others? Have we all forgotten? Or... Hmm... Alright, so the interview DVD has been updated. Uh-oh... What do we got? For anything that has a start, there has to be an end. And if the end comes, then that means it's time for a fresh start. Oh there boy. is no night that doesn't have a dawn. Although that dawn is totally pitch black, there is no storm that won't eventually end. Of course, then that leads to drought. But as I said, every end is a promise of a new beginning. Which is why I'm sure we'll get to meet again, because the end is only the beginning! Okay. Anyway, let's get started! The beginning of the end of the class trial! Oh boy. Everyone gather once again at you know where! Oh joy. <laughs> Uh, 
it's about to begin again. The class trial is going to start. The final class trial. The last time all our lives will be on the line. The last time hope and despair are on the line. I don't have a choice. I have to do this. Okay then, this is the end. Alright. And that is where we're going to wrap up today's episode. We should be able to finish this up next week and see what all mysteries Hope Seek Academy has in store for us when we go through the final class trial. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I am very excited to see the conclusion of what is going to happen next week. So I hope you'll join me then and until next time, bye guys.